to the other. Yes. I'd like to add uh, hazard trees and uh, nitrate uh, farm ground waste. Citizens' comments this evening. So there are none. Consent agenda. Approve minutes for regular meeting of 7 1 2014. Approve appropriation ordinance of 7 15 2014 in the amount of $80,731.65. So moved. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. For it. Um, how long do we need? Oh, 15 minutes probably. I need a motion to go into executive session under attorney client privilege for 15 minutes. So moved. Second. So any further discussion? Who to include who? To include council, mayor, and legal. subject? Attorney client privilege. No, it's, that's your, your, re, your reason, your subject will be uh, pending possible litigation. No further discussion? Yeah, I'd like to add pending legal uh, for the executive session. Okay. You have to add what? Pending legal litigation. Yeah. Possible. Possible. Pending. There's no further discussion. Do we have a second? I'm sorry. Sure, a second. Maybe. All fair. Opposed. Motion carries for a. Meetings back to open session. Um, for another 10 minute executive session, my privilege uh, for possible legal litigation. I second. To, to have council, mayor, or something like that. Uh, John Manslow used to rent, he had rented it for a long time. And, uh, I've rented it before. Yeah, so I mean, it's, it's a convenience. It saves somebody a trip to go to Great Bend or Pratt or wherever they want to get it. But once again, I, it's, it's up to you guys. I just want to make you aware of it. So. I would entertain raising the rental rate to about $100 an hour. Yeah, an hour or a day? Or I mean a day. 
Or you can go $25 an hour. I, mean, I wouldn't have a problem with that either. Whatever you guys want to do. If you go hourly rate on it, well, chances are, if it was in the middle you of the night. You need to minimum, too, though. Yeah, you need to. And we I, don't, by the day, probably better, I think. Yeah. We don't let anybody keep it out overnight. Oh, you don't? You know, well, it be simply because we may need it in the middle of the night. So if anybody rents it, you know, if they need to finish up the job the next day, I, I, you know, I'll, I'll continue that as a day. But, you know, if, they, if they're not quite done, but usually if they don't have it on you know, just a regular working day. So. Well, my suggestion would be take it to $125 a day. Okay. I mean, that's still cheaper than what you can go to town and rent it, and you ain't got to leave town to get it, so it's saving you quite a bit of money to begin with. So, mm -hmm. so then I'd be a uh, motion to raise the rental rate on the air compressor from $25 a day to $125 a day. So be it. Second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries 4 0. Uh, next thing I had was hazard trees, and I don't know if any of you have noticed that we've got a lot of dead trees in town. A lot of it's from drought, some of it's from disease, but some of them are over, you know, roadway sidewalks. We've got an ordinance. I got some copies. Anybody wants to take a quick look at it? And it's the city has the right to go ahead and you know bring it to their attention. They have 60 days to to you know remove the tree. If they do, don't do it, then the city can cause to have it done and they can pay the bill or it can be put on their taxes. It's just a matter of, and I know you're familiar with storms and stuff, trees come down, fall on cars, you know, something could fall on a windy day, somebody walking down the sidewalk. So it's just something I feel like we need to address. Uh, we're not going to, you know, it's going to be the worst, you know, we're not going to, a little old limb up here, but it's, if, it's a, if it's considered a, Something that could be a, in the way the ordinance reads a, a hazard to, to people or property, then they need to take care of it. So, if you, I just want to make you aware of it. We don't have to do anything, but I think it's there's a lot of. I mean, it's kind of surprising once you start looking how many how many there are. So, well, the problem that I mean, that's can be pretty expensive for some people. Yeah. Um, I mean, I know where we're coming from, I know the ordinance is on there, but for some of these people that are on set income or whatever, that's, I mean, yeah, I just three, had three one taken out and it's, it's 900 to 1,000 bucks to have one dropped in that area yard, so. so. You don't want to address it? That's up to you. I'm just bringing it to you. Oh, I'm, I think mean, I'm just, this would be a pretty big can of worms to get open. <coughs> I know that we got a lot of dead trees in town. In fact, I've got several I need to take down. I just haven't got them Do we want to at least send the letters and uh, then take it from there once the letters have been sent and we have people coming to us? Well, I mean, yeah, well, let's, I mean, at least they know it's on there. Yeah. I mean, at that point we can, I guess, address it, I guess, a little further. Yeah. So we're going to send the letters out with the 60 days. I mean, normally when we send a letter out, we'll send the ordinance with it, and it's going to have it all in there. So if somebody questions it, then you're going to decide what we're going to do or who we're going to. Send the letters out, then um, determine what we're going to do at a later day. I think that's I don't think you can send the letters out unless you're going to exercise the order. Well, as I was say, if we don't do anything, we might as well go back to that and take that yeah. paragraph yeah. out of that That's deal. true. Yeah, I just realized that as soon as I said it. I mean, can we, can we put together a letter informing them that they have a dead tree that is a hazard? Just trying to do is it informative without throwing that? See, and ask them nicely or kindly to try to get it removed and, and, in, and in, in, in the letter but if you don't get it done, then down the road, you're, we're probably going to have to send you another letter or something. Be nice about it. Can you do something like that, Mal? Yeah, At least get them, get their attention thinking on it. Okay. What do you guys think about that? That's fine. I mean, I really don't want to slap that in everybody's face because then that's going to... Right. But, you, but this, then again, this will give them a little... 
But then in the same instance, if we're not going to follow it, let's get it off the book. Okay. So, one way or the other, you know what we're, I mean? We're going to have just to, all for taking them out, but that's... Yeah. We're going to have to take care of the dead trees, but well, you've got them, I've got them, uh -huh. Terry's got them, everybody's probably got them. Okay. We had a drought for four years, yeah. we lost a lot of trees. Mm -hmm. And you know they're not going to get better. Really. No, I understand that. But I don't, like I said... Let's start with the courtesy, then, if the council's all right with that. It'd be fine. I'd be yeah, fine with that. Mm -hmm. All right, very good. And explain mm -hmm. to them that over the drought. Yeah. And, yes. I mean, and that we're going to have to do something. So, I mean... At some point in time, it's continue fine. to be a hazard. I guess this way we can honestly say we tried the very nice, polite way of doing it. Hopefully they yep. get it and we don't have to worry about going any further with it. Uh, the other item, I uh, visited with Troy a little bit about this the other night. On the nitrate, the farm ground out there, the wheat's off of it, and we talked about earlier about getting set up on, and I just want clarification is why I'm bringing it up as far as how how long of a term of a lease we want to go for, and uh, you know, just, to make, just to, if you want to just go on a cash, is that what you guys want to do, cash lease, cash rent? That's fine. Who has it now? Spares. Spares. So, like, if they're going to plan alfalfa, how long do you need to? Five years? Seven years? What is alfalfa? Seven? I would want a ten if I was going to do it. For that, but I mean, you can still I, do I mean, I don't the know what cash deal. I would say let's stick with a cash deal. That way, we ain't got to worry about paying our third of the bills and yeah. open up a whole other yeah. deal within the. It's yeah. cleaner. <laughs> yeah, I and mean, you're guaranteed sort of yeah, a certain amount of. It may cost us. It may not let us make as much money some years, or it may make us a lot more in some years. Who knows? I mean, I just with whatever we wanted to do, or whatever it gets been in is, I just do it as a cash deal. It's mine. The only other thing I'd bring up too, and is, is would be a concern, or I've heard it mentioned about as far as some crops out there, as far as you know, I mean, corn could be detrimental. You know, as far as if it's heavily fertilized, it's not irrigated out there. But uh, I know I've heard that mentioned that it might not be the best thing to have around those wells out there. You know, so you can stay with. Well, the other the other option is to, if you're that worried about it, the other option is to pay somebody to put it to CRP. <coughs> I don't know. I just I mean, well. I mean, I every, everything, I everything we're going to use out there is going to have nitrogen on it. Right. But as so. far as you know, the weed or anything like that, I don't know how much you know. It, if you put corn on there, it's probably the most heavily fertilized crop. I don't know. Probably. Farmer, so. As far as nitrogen, yes. Yeah. So that's the only thing I've heard mentioned about it. There'd be a caution, maybe. It's I mean, you could exclude it if you wanted to, and that might turn some people away. I don't know. Well, you, we can put whatever guidelines in there we want. But like you said, it may limit on what, what they want to do. Okay, I need to be caught up here. So we're talking city-owned property that we're currently leasing for farming. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. So the, the current lease is farm. up. Is yes. that the deal? Yeah, that's okay. pretty mm -hmm. And are we going to put it out for bid? That's what we're talking about. Yes. Okay. All right. Can we um, designate the type of crops that can be grown? No, Ned Marks is a good guy, you know, as far as what he could recommend, whether you want to use him or not. I mean, if you be a simple phone call, what you think would, you know, whether you agree with it or not, so it's a council. But I would think wheat would be the best thing to put out there. You're still going to have nitrogen thrown on it. So, I mean, in, in all honesty, if you want to do it, then, then if you want to, I guess if it's that big of a concern, then we ought to put the buffer strip, make sure there's a buffer strip between all our wells and everything. And We've got that now. Handle and that maybe, the way you want. And maybe, you know, as long as you maintain the buffer strip, you're fine. But, you know, we've already got that laid out. Right. And like I said, the other thing is not do anything and plant CRP grass or something like that. That way you're not fertilizing it. You go on. And we have farm ground all the way around it that ain't ours. So. 
there's farm ground that butts right up to the east side of it that's probably going to be corn more times than not. But that is according to, you know, it's down gradient of the water for our area. So that's, yeah. I'd be in favor of making a phone call to Ned Marks and see what his input is. Because I remember him talking about you didn't want certain crops. See what other cities have done, maybe, just ask him. I mean, I can ask him what his recommendation would be, and I can bring it back next time, and you guys can go with the change of whatever. Okay. But we do need to, I mean, if we are going to get leaks, we probably need to act pretty quick because yeah. we've got to let them bid on it and get it back and still have. When would we need to have the lease awarded by? And somewhere in the middle of that, you're probably either going to have to pay somebody to spray it or mow it. Okay. When do we need to have a bid by? Of course, you can get one. I mean, okay. Well, you said that. Well, I mean, they're going to be trying to get, if they, it is going to go back to wheat, then they're going to be trying to get it ready to go back to wheat, and it ain't really fair to hold them up until the very last minute. So. Okay, and what would the very last minute be? Well, I'd say we need to try and have it done, I mean, get at least bids by the end of this month, because then that, they're going to plant wheat anywhere, from, you know, last part of September, first part of October. Okay. That's what I It's the same. For. Landowner on both sides of it? Just on one side. Just on one side. So they farm this stuff to the west and then somebody else, uh, Fishers, farm the Craig and Vance farm the other to the east. Who to farms the, east. the west side of it? Spares. Okay. So what's the direction of the council then? That's the well, I guess if we're going to do that, then, I mean, if you want to follow what Ned says, my, I guess if that's the case, then I guess you could, as far as I'm concerned, you could, if you're going to go off what he says, then whatever he says, you could put it out as bids at that point without having to come back to council, if that's agreeable with you guys. Right. If that's what we want to do is follow whatever Ned says. I know, sir. I think... I think corn, I think the mayor's right. I think he, the corn was a big, big factor. Well, it's, I'm not disagreeing or, I'm just saying if that's what you guys want to do, I'd just give Mel the approval to, when he finds out, follow his advice and get it put out for bids right away, and that way we can get it taken care of early. Stretching out quite a while, isn't it? Yeah. But I mean, if I was doing hay, I mean. Yeah. Oh, yeah, if you're doing alfalfa, you know, so, you'd want 10 years. Yeah. I mean, we could start with a five year deal. But if you're going to do farming, I would get five. Yeah. going to ask for an executive session to uh, for hire a part-time officer out over the officer that uh, had done some right along with us and was interested in the job, took a full-time job for the city of Stafford Police Department. So we never actually got one hired? Not yet. Not yet. Uh-huh. Okay. I thought we had one hired. No. Made a motion, but you didn't accept the position, right? What's that? Yeah, yeah we no, made this, is, this is somebody after. Yeah. yeah. Well, I've, I've had two now. I've had, I had one that changed his mind, and then one that said he was going to come to work, and then obviously got offered full time with benefits, and it would be kind of crazy to turn that down. So, yep. Yeah. I'm back to square one again. Okay. budget that has all the things in it that we talked about during the budget workshop and your bottom line still looks the same after we put in some of the other things that you asked for and I can go through and show you where those are all put in if you 
want to. Um, on page 8B, you wanted to increase the um, salaries in general administration to include your legal fees for an attorney. So that's been increased there. We did that based on what dollar amount per month. Do you remember? You guys gave me an, an, an amount. A month, no, you gave it as an annual number for me. Okay. 24? <laughs> okay. I'd have fine. to go back to my notes and look at that. I'm sorry. Increase the amount of sewer utility um, transfer to that would be on page 12. Transfer from sewer utility to replacement fund by 10,000. Also, um, when I sent it to the auditors, they said budget to zero. So I have done that on that fund. So that's I just increased the capital outlay a little bit to budget to zero on that. So it gives us budget authority of everything, only if we have cash and reason to spend it. We increase the transfer for vehicles on AP again on the capital outlay. We didn't do anything on the water and water, correct? Did we? we did not make any changes. Okay. from what was presented. Right. We changed the power plant, didn't we? But it was up to the power plant, didn't we? I know it was light. Well, it was already included in there. I didn't add it in after you had seen it. Well, that's what I, I didn't electrical. remember if we decided to budget something in for the meters and stuff. That's we were doing that or electrical, all. the meters. I couldn't remember if we had decided to budget anything in there in case we wanted to go to that system. I don't think or if that we, we had another alternative did, route. But we have our surplus fund. So, I mean, we could use that and it doesn't okay. have to be budgeted. So, okay. I mean, there's monies available if you want to go that direction. Okay. And we also talked about maybe leasing part of that too. So, right. um, I do on, I'm sorry, on 12, whoops. 8C is where you can see where all the capital improvement is, uh, police, pool, and fire. We have increased police there. In the okay. As you guys have looked through it this weekend, was there anything that popped out that you had questions about? The only other thing I didn't. Um, I remember talking about it, but I couldn't remember if we decided to do anything for the pool. If we decided to budget in on this improvement deal more. No, we were going to we, we continue to continue with, with the 5000 we've done previously that we used for the paint. And then if we have any money left over in the pool at the end of this year, we're going to have it carry over for okay. that to cover that. To cover, to cover the kitty pool or whatever. To, yeah, that's what we do doing for that. Okay.
there's a, we have to do a public hearing. That's what the publication is. And so usually we do it right before our meeting. So we can either yeah, do it at the next have, one. Will we have time to get it to paper and when that occurs and give yeah. us all the time we got to have? Yeah. 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 Because we have next weeks. That will give us more than 10 days. Okay. It's got to be two weeks paper. Just one. Just one, one, one in days. there, but it has to be 10 days between the time it's published and the time of our hearing. And okay. it does work this time that way. <laughs> okay. Um, so before the next one. Cats up and running. Uh, we've got it. Sorry. It's kind of an odd way to put it, I guess. But it's uh, it's it's um, it's doing what it was designed to do to run with other engines or with the tire run by itself. The only thing we have is we bought a new uh, processor to run it. The processor it's in there is 20 years old, but uh, we run into a little snag because everything now is 64 bit. It runs on 32 bit. So. Uh, we're going to, I got it through Randy, and, and Randy is going to detune it, per se. It saves $1,200 in updating the software by knocking it back down to 32-bit. And uh, we'll change it out to just be a little bit of fine-tuning and everything's done. So that's all I've got. New business. John received a letter from Wells Fargo on a piece of property that they have foreclosed on and taken into their possession. They are interested in donating the property back to the city. Um, if I'm reading this correctly, they are willing to donate, or they're, it would come with $5,000 in cash to do roofing repairs. Property is at 523 East 3rd. Um, it is 
kind of caddy pull from the Fisher shop there on 3rd Street in lieu of, I went by and took some pictures so everybody could kind of have an idea of where the property was. My first thought was economic development, but then I got to thinking about it a little bit more. And my thought is, is that if we take this property, have the roof repaired, and just have the roof repaired, I don't know what the interior looks like at this point, and put it up for auction. Yes, sir. I took the opportunity to go with and look at the property. Okay. The inside of it is going to take a lot of it's a pretty bad shape. Cherry was, we were, she went down also, we looked at it at the same time. We went on that off at one time about 4 5 30, 4 o'clock tonight. And I talked to Mrs. Shannon, something, the real, the real estate lady, and I'm just guessing it's going to take $30,000 time to put a roof on it and get it where you can turn around and sell it. It's got a lot of mold in the basement. But you guys, I give you a phone number. You can go sure to look at it, but it didn't impress me a bit. Then, um, what I would, if it's all right with council, what I would do is I would have John forward this information on to the economic development board and let them see if they're interested in it. Sound like a reasonable thing to do? So Perhaps I should I would, get back and get what, what contact with her. Here? As far as they want to give it to us, yeah, they want to give it to us. So we give it to them, fix the roof. We can still put it up for auction. Boy, I, I mean, if it brings two grand, that's two grand that we get. No, yeah, but the roof's going to be more than that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Now, they're, they're giving, giving you I five know. grand. She told me a roof was ninety five hundred. Her estimate was ninety five hundred. Okay. Well, I was just saying because I guess I'm missing something here. Go, you, before we do anything, he needs to go look at it. I can tell them where the keys are. Has the floor furnace. Well, I'm, I'm just looking at this. Rough. No matter what it is on the inside, no matter how rough it is, you put it up. If if we don't have anything in it, if we put it for auction, whatever it brings, it'd still be profit. So you think we ought to just take it, sell it as is, put it up for auction? I wouldn't have a problem with that. Well, you could do that, and I mean, I, I guess I don't understand how all this works, but I mean, you could even put it up at auction, saying if there's five thousand dollars cash, it comes with it. Is that in, or is that in our legal Or I guess you can just, I don't know, we can take the house and take the 5,000 cash and put it towards sidewalks, pool, whatever. I mean, wouldn't it just be basically be like... I think if you take the property and the cash is given with the property with the intention of it going to the roof repair, I think it should go to the roof repair. I'm not sure. Well, that's where the way that I would, would take it. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure not if we could take it and put it in the general fund someplace and and not do anything with it. I would I would really suggest everybody look at. It. Yeah, or, I mean, no matter yes. what you and I think too, it wouldn't hurt to have like somebody that does roofing look at it, see what they give us an estimate on what it costs to fix it. Well, my question would be: Is ninety five hundred dollars to completely replace? Them? Right. But what would it take to repair it? Because I know there's a hole in it, or at least I'm assuming what, that's what that tarp is. Yeah. So if you took and just repaired what needs to be repaired, would the 5000 cover that? I probably would. Well, in all honesty, that's what it says. In it's lieu got, of completing extensive roof repairs. It's got wood shake shingles on there, wood, old wood shingles. But again, if we took and repaired the roof to where it was structurally enclosed, or it's not going to be code anyway because of the interior, and then auctioned it. Okay, if the city takes that over to them, will it have to be up to code? Especially if you're selling it as is, you're not saying that it meets code. It doesn't. But you know, you might have somebody out there that does some rehab work and stuff and can. Do their own sweat equity, and it would maybe be thirty thousand. I don't know. And economic development might decide to come and bid on it. 
I'm not against it uh, by no stretch. But when I looked at it, I really looked at my whole card and I rethought the deal. I mean, is the well, foundation? The foundation looks pretty good. But the roof is... It has some kind of leak. It's got a leak somewhere, and I think maybe the plumbing's frozen, busted in the basement, maybe. But it's 1950s. Four furnace, window air conditioner. It's, it's, you guys need to go look at it. Well, I'm not interested in it, in trying to fix it up and become a, a flip this house organization. <laughs> I, I mean, but to me, if, if somebody's going to give us a house and a little bit of money to fix the roof, I'd say we take it. And if we, even if we get the roof fixed and we decide we don't want to put it up for an auction, we can either always, always donate it over to the, if the economic development would rather have it, we could give it to them. We have no money in it, so... Uh, that's why, and we have something. nothing to do but gain, yeah, in all honesty. So I building two ginormous duplexes, three, two, two, three bedroom, two and a half bath, two car garage. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, my, my deal would be to see what it costs to actually fix that roof. If we can fix it for that 5000 and get it where it's right, I mean, not necessarily a new roof, but where it's right, I think we'd be nuts not to take the property if they're going to give it to us. Like I said, I, and I, but I'm not. I'm not interested in taking it on and like I said, becoming no, a flip house. I was deal. strictly looking at it from the yeah. I mean, we could sell it or work to it. To it. I was looking at it from a point of it be if we could get it, get it somebody living in, it, it would be another utility. Yeah, that's what I was. Plus, right. it, it's going to be if you don't get somebody living in it, yeah. and. How many years are we going to be looking at the dilapidated yeah, structure? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm surprised it hasn't gone down quicker than it yeah, has. Can you find somebody that would yeah. take it's a look at it before the next meeting yeah. and let us know? Yeah. Or if we even have to have a, I, would, I mean, I wouldn't be close to coming in and having us real quick. Especially this is what we want to do, and if they got a no right away, I don't know. I mean, if they're willing to give it to us and it's just not totally ready to fall down, I don't think we'd be nuts not to take it. Because we ain't going to be out nothing by the way it looks. How, how about this? If the roof can be repaired for the 5000 you just have it already decided that you guys will, will take it. I mean, can't, if I find somebody that say they can get the roof fixed and the 5000 will cover that, I mean, the city's interested in it, right? But is that like putting a new roof on, or no, 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 just, just repairing. repairing, just repairing what's there? I don't think repair is going to do it. I w I wouldn't have a problem doing that at all, as okay. long as as long as in the motion that once it's repaired, it goes up for public auction. Yeah. Yeah. Or it's donated or to it's the donated, donated, yeah. donated to economic economic development. development. Yeah. But I I really think we should put it up for public auction because. While I understand what you're saying, and it's not something that I would move into, I'm not 20 years old anymore. Right. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of young people out there that would take Great. advantage of something Absolutely. like that yep. and would be thrilled <coughs> at the opportunity yeah. to rehabilitate something a little bit at a time. It is a two-bedroom. Two-bedroom in the back, basement, too. Two well, I'll make a motion to allow uh, R to, to accept the property under the circumstance that we can have the roof fixed for under 5000 and give them Mill the authority to make that call. And us taking on this property with the roof fixed, with these only us allowing it to go back to public auction or donation to the economic development, economic development Stafford County Economic Development. That all the stipulations you want in? No, okay, I'm like going to have to hear it again. <laughs> I don't okay, know I've got say it twice. <laughs> Except the property with stipulation that the roof can be repaired for the allotted $5,000. $5, and that Mel has the giving Mel authority to make that call or to have somebody make, to that, make call. that decision. What were you going to say, Bob? I would like to add to his motion 
I don't have it all yet, so hang on. <laughs> Decision and the property would then go to public auction or donate it. Is it on the mo list? Yes. Okay, it's bad. Yeah, I was going to say I figured And I would it's... also like to add that we, I mean, not that it has to be, but I would like to see the work done by local contractors <clears throat> if possible. Give them for sure that email. Or donated to the Stafford Stafford County. County you can make the And I, as soon as the, if we choose to take this, as soon as it's done, I want the grass mowed and the yard cleaned up within two days. You mean when it's auctioned? No, being becoming our property. Okay. What was after after? The auction and once we accept the property, the yard needs to be mowed immediately. We we'll need to clean it up anyway if we're going to put it up for auction. Well, it needs to be cleaned up. It's does that need to be in the motion or is that okay? You put it in there, but I would think that'd be common sense. But let's just put it in there so we got it. I wait to talk in it. Hmm? I wait to talk in it. Church to use the square Saturday, August 16th from 3 to 7 p.m. Um, they want to block off the east side of the square and have the ability to use the park benches and trash cans as they have in the past. Um, they'll have a meal for the public. They're inviting all of us to attend as well. I make there's, a motion to. There's no other date, nothing going on in the square that you know of other that would be a conflict. Okay. I make a motion to do the same thing this year as they've done in the past three or four years. Second. Second. Okay. Second. Okay. In Valley, use of the square. As a past year. Yeah. And I take it that they're saying, I didn't actually read the letter, but I take it they're actually stating they'll kind of have or clean it up. Yep. Yeah. Huh? We will yeah. pick up the benches and put back up the yeah. years. Yep. Okay. Um, did we vote on that? Huh? No, we have not Okay. Yeah. <laughs> is there any further discussion? All that the is that is August the sixteenth. Yes. <coughs> 16th. Is there a conflict or what? I've got a niece that's getting married in the livery stable that weekend. But that shouldn't be a conflict. But I think that they may be coming to ask to do some blockage down there in the evening. I'm not positive. We'll deal with that when they come and ask. Okay. <laughs> All right. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries for a. Okay. We had an issue at the pool over the 4th of July holiday. There was some confusion about the fact that the pool wasn't supposed to be closed on 4th of July. Um, just a misunderstanding. And what came up was overtime or time and a half pay for the guards since it was a holiday. Now, John and I researched it. They're seasonal employees. We are not required to pay them time and a half. And this is entirely up to council. But my thought process is we're requiring them to work on a federal holiday. It equates to roughly a hundred dollars. And I think we should go ahead and pay them time and a half. That's just my personal opinion. 
So we need to change the policy so I, that it I stays think, that way? I think so. If we're going to require the pool to be open on 4th of July, with the exception of the pool manager because they're under a contract, any of the other... What are you going to do about every other holiday, though, that it's open? It opens Memorial Day weekend. But Memorial Day is day. I think we're opening a can of worms when you do that. I mean, I know it ain't that much money, but you're opening a can of worms to me that nobody else has ever had an issue with it for the last how many years? And it's up to you guys. Like I said, all I did was voice my, my opinion. Um, I think it's ultimately council's decision. I understand what you're saying. Um, I mean, to me, if you're going to reword it, if you're going to open that up, then you just go in there and you say every holiday they get time and a half or we shut the pool during them days. Yeah, or you leave it like it is. It would be Memorial Day and Fourth of July. If you do it for the if you do it for the seasonal help at the swimming pool, you're going to have to do it at season help in a, that helps male. But they're off because everything else is closed. Or you could just close the pool. I don't know how many they have on the fourth actually come. I don't know. We just need to make a policy change one way or the other if if you're going to. I would direction. really hate. I, I would really hate to see us close the pool on Fourth of July. Um, people are off work. People have, depending on the timing on it, you know, people have friends, family, whatever coming in. I think it needs to be open. Just my opinion. Well, I, I get, I get. Like I said, it's not a whole lot of money. I don't care one way or if you do it one way or the other. But if you do it, you're gonna have to do it for all the holidays, whatever holidays there is in that, <clears throat> and specify. Yeah, Fort Road. You can't be more than what they We are typically closed before Labor Day, correct? Yeah. We so, try, well, I think, what does the contract read to Labor Day or something? Yeah, we try. It's, lots of times we don't have enough help to even do it. I mean, yeah. it's, it's a, the plan to. But. It's a matter of being able to put guards on the stands. Okay. The it's up to you guys. I make a motion that we pay them time they have on holidays. I mean, we're just only talking the two holidays, correct? $200. Um, dollars. Yeah, it's not that big of a deal. I'm just saying if we do one, we, one holiday, we need to do them all. So we're going to change and the policy. And this is just for the life. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, so we're going to change the policy to include all three of the holidays, potentially. Memorial Day, Fourth of July, and Labor Day, in the event that the pool happens to still be open at that point. I'm trying to remember her motion. Made a motion to pay time and a half lifeguards. And also, the assistant isn't on the contract either, is she? Yeah. No, she's not, so it would yeah, be the assistant. Yeah, also include the assistant. That's just retro. We didn't. Were we open Memorial Day this year? Is this just going to be retroactive back for Fourth of July, starting from then, or clear? I mean. Yeah, we'll just go back to Fourth of July this year, and then in the future policy. I don't know if we were even open. We were open that Monday. Was yeah, because I was going to say if you word it like that, and we go back and pay one, we're going to have to pay the other one. Starting with the Fourth of July, two thousand and fourteen. Okay. Yeah, I will get the policy out and their their policy out and make those changes, bring it back to the table, and then you guys will have to approve those changes. But this will go ahead and allow us That's, to do the table. We're not, okay. we're not there yet. Okay. I have a motion on the table. Oh, I'm sorry. So, do I have a second? Second. Is there any further discussion? How many people will, will this pertain to? There were five cards working on the 4th of July. Five? Yeah. And how many? And they worked four hours. She said it's 100 bucks. And how many uh, super 
second super, or whatever you call assistant it. Assistant manager? Assistant manager. I don't think the assistant manager worked that day. I think Jamie, the pool manager, did. I don't know that for a fact, but I asked her how many guards she had on, and she said five. So that's just that we're going to pay time and half for possibly all three holidays from now on, and it's retroactive back to basically July 4th or 3rd of this year. And what are they, it's basically stated. And what do they get an hour now? 7.25. And are they school kids? Mm -hmm. The majority of them are. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Is there any additional conversation? All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries 3 1. Okay, the last item on the agenda is the health insurance. You guys got some information from our Blue Cross Blue Shield rep. Just kind of telling you what they what the policy covers now, um, what the policy would cover if we went to the elite, the platinum level elite um, plan, which would be the non grandfathered plan. Um, put together a spreadsheet that you should all have. Um, that shows the cost difference between what we are currently doing and what it would cost us to go non-grandfathered and then the hourly cost associated with that. Excuse me. Did you run your copy? Um, the spreadsheet. Okay, on this low high average. Mm -hmm. This is the, the That's standard. saying of all our employees, the average is going to be at that 507 or the 577 for an employee only. Right. Right now, if they gave us a quote on the non-grandfathered, and I took that quote and without trying to identify anybody. Right. The low, the lowest employee for employee only was the $310. The highest was the 843.28, and that averaged to. 500.77. Okay. So it's not a true average of everybody's. It's just an average. It's a midpoint, correct? No, it's an average. Oh, okay. You took everybody's. It's an average. Well, am I missing something? But that'd be a lot cheaper over the whole deal, wouldn't it? Or am I missing something in your little spreadsheet here? No, it would be a whole lot cheaper now. Yeah. It's going to be thousand. Different. And that's that's a uh... and this um, the non grandfathered total annual cost is based on what we have in the way of employees and the coverage that they have currently. Correct. So they if they're if they're an employee spouse that's included in that amount. If they're an employee child or if they have two or three kids that's included in that hundred and fifty seven thousand. Right. There would be some changes um, as far as how it all worked. Um, the employees would be out of pocket up front, but there are ways to deal with that. They do have the availability of the unreimbursed medical plan, which basically is a cafeteria plan benefit. You can elect to donate anywhere between zero and twenty-five hundred dollars a year, and anything that insurance doesn't cover, you can use that money. And it all comes out prior to taxes. Yeah, it reduces your tax base. So, I mean, there are options available there.
protection there is. I, I will say, you know, and we use our insurance. So if we're not going to stick with this one, this is still a good plan. I would not be upset to use this plan if that's right. what you're asking. Well, I, I mean, if I, there's different monies, but it, it ought to come out pretty close. Okay. And the coverage is probably actually, um, it probably covers a few things in, that Obamacare makes the insurances do that maybe weren't on the other, you know, maybe some preventative or something. But uh, what they have now, the only thing that they won't have is the eye exam that we would have on our major medical. We always had a portion of an eye exam that is not there on the new plan. But to me, if that's the, the major thing, um, and like I said, the money comes in different ways. They won't have a copay for each uh, doctor's appointment. They have to pay for the whole thing up front or 50% of the whole thing up front, but that goes against the deductible. Right now, their copay doesn't go against their deductible. So, I mean, it, it it's, it's different, but it's still, looks like about the same money out of pocket. So $31,000. The thing to remember with, <laughs> and, and there's nothing we can do about it, we get older every year, and this is based on age. So, of course, as we retire out and younger ones come in, it'll drop and, you know, it'll do this all the way through. But, Is there, talking to, to them, is there a, uh, and I know, I know they'd be looking in the future, but would it, staying grandfathered or ungrandfathered, will it affect the rate increases one way or the other? I mean, where we've been always taking a rate increase every year, it seems like the way it is now, whatever percentage that is, will, would that percentage be consistent, whether it's grandfathered or not grandfathered? There will be the increase, and correct me if I'm wrong because you've listened to, but there will be the increase for our age every year. And then I think it's like a 7% is what it is this year for the overall pool. And what, what was the increase on the... It, the, was, the, it was about the same. That's what I was saying. Yeah. It was more than 7% increase, actually. Well, I budgeted more than that because we didn't have that number. Right, yet. but I mean, I thought the actual number was, they said, was going to be higher than 7% anyway. We actually don't know exactly what the rates are going to be. Last year. Oh, last year to yeah. this year. I thought it, it was like higher than 7%. For whatever reason, 14. That's what I was thinking. Between the 10 and 15. Yeah. 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 That's what I was thinking. Between the 10 and 15%. I think I budgeted 15%, but I don't think we used that. I would have to check. Okay. If that's pertinent to your decision. And we have to make this decision at what time? Well, we don't renew until January 1, but if we're going to change what's happening with our employees and what's going to be happening with their paychecks and all that kind of stuff, we probably should change it. I would say make that decision in the next month or so so everybody has a chance to look at what's happening and try to, to prepare for that. And so what I'm hearing you say, Troy, is that we can basically leave alone and have, not leave alone, basically we can leave it structured the way it is now where the city pays 95%, employee pays 5%, but go to the non-grandfather plan and still save $31,000 a year. I would, I would still like to do something else, but I guess... I mean, I, that's just where I'm starting. That, that's it's where gradual. I'm starting at, too. I yeah. mean, that is a $31,000. If we do do anything else, that's going to be a huge... It's, it's going to be a lot more of a problem with the employees than this is. And this is a $31,000 a year savings, so I mean, I guess... I would, and this is based on our current deductibles, correct? This plan, I mean, yeah. but Where's if we raise the this, the current plan, the, the current 
current plan, actually, that is the total cost. I don't have that fractured out for the 95 five a second. Is an on grandfather structured out? No, it's not. So you okay, still well, it's still looking dollar yeah, to yeah, dollar. So, okay. yeah. But what, what I'm saying, though, is that say it's a $1,000 deductible, both these are based on that same deductible. Yeah. It's very similar. Like I said, the money's a little bit The only other thing, I guess, if we're not going to change it to where we're, we're dropping... Okay, here's, here's... In order to make any change, we're going to have to go to the non grandfather plan. Right, I understand that. So, I mean, you're looking at $31,000 right off the top. Then... What we would need to look at is, you know, try and do some math on, and, and I can try and put some numbers together for not the next meeting because I won't be here, but for the meeting on the 19th, um, that will show kind of what the individual employees would be looking at going from the current plan to the non grandfather plan because for ex for example the low end of it on the employee only you know that's a two hundred and three dollar a month savings but on the high end of it it's gonna mean another almost three hundred and fifty dollars to that a month. So kind of look at how we might structure it so it's fair to everyone. That in a way that's fair to everybody. And, and the reason that is is strictly... It's based on age. age. Okay, how many year, how many age, or how many years of difference are we talking about? You mean I what's mean, our youngest the, 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 Yeah, the low employee, and I'm, I'm not one of his yeah. age, between the low employee and the high, the oldest employee, that's how many I, years? I really don't that? know what the youngest employee's age is. I would say it's probably like 40 years, 45 years. I would guess that. The yeah. youngest employee? Between no. the youngest and the oldest. Oh, yeah. yeah. I would right. say 40 or 45 years. Yeah. So, so we're saying basically 40 years difference. Mm -hmm. So Actually, I'd probably we're say taking 550 to divided by 40 would be what? And this is just going to be roughly what? because I'm sure it goes up incrementally as you get older. Oh, yeah. So. Okay, what am I dividing again? Because it just disappeared out of my head. 550? Yeah, and, and it doesn't matter because that ain't going to work. No. I was just trying to figure out how yeah. you could, but Years to I'm, I'm sure between 20 and 20, or between 20 and 30, it ain't going to be near as much per year as it is from 30 to 40 or 40 to 50 or right. 50. I was just trying to figure out yeah. some way of... Um, well, yeah. to me, I mean, just looking at this, that would be... If, especially where the employees don't have an issue with it. Yeah. You guys the employees the really haven't had a chance to look at it. Well, I know but what you guys are saying. Between the two of you, there's not going to be a huge impact to the employees. I've, I've looked at this and I've asked questions knowing a little bit about our employees, but I certainly don't know enough about our well, employees, nor do I want to know about their medical right. situations. Yeah, but I don't either. Once, once you guys have kind of, if you're thinking we're going with this plan no matter what, however it's going to unfold, then we need to have Michelle come and explain it to the employees so they can ask the questions that is pertinent to them. And then I'll have our AFLAC person come and really explain that flex bid option so that they can take advantage of that um, as well. For $31,000, I think it's worth it. So yeah, I'm going to talk to you. Uh, Bob? Huh? I mean, to me, that's the way I, I mean, if I had to decide the date from what you told me, that's the way I'd vote today. Yep. For $31,000, it means I'm, I'm all for it. That's and that would encourage every one of our employees uh, to be very happy with that. Yeah.
Yeah, well, much better than what they were going to have to do. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. maybe we can save from dropping families and everything else off this exactly. So, I, I, I mean, I, I would say let's get somebody in there. I would say let's get somebody in here and take a look at this and say, hey, so you want this me is the way I think we're going to go. Have them come and talk to the employees? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I, and also, I mean, the employees do need to know that this could be their, their best of the worst two Absolutely. options. So, Absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, guys. They, they may not be completely 100% satisfied with, with this compared to what they got, but no, they but they're not, explain it. They're not, um, I, I don't think they're great that way. They're, you know, they're just concerned, right. you know, about things. And I think this is, this is absolutely a good starting point. And, you know, I would encourage everyone of them to be extremely happy with that, you know. Well, and, and part of that is educating them because it's a change. Right. You know, everybody's used to what they're doing. And so it's a matter of just showing where the differences are going to be and applying it to their specific situations. And these, these numbers, both these numbers are what's going to happen. Correct. I mean, as far as, as far as she this is their current bid for this coming year, grandfather, and this would be their current. But I understood that to be in the third quarter. They don't have the year end numbers yet for either one of those. Okay, but so, but it's going to be. Close. We're still we're still looking at the same yeah. dollars. Close. Okay. Yeah. I mean, whether well, that's yeah. Okay. Yes, that's the best numbers that she has, but she's saying she can't guarantee that that's going to be exactly that. Well, yeah. They'll have those numbers probably in the first of October. Yes. In October. But you can certainly go ahead and make your uh, decision, get it on the books. They know what they're looking at. They well, as long as I mean, I get to make the decision based on a $31,000 difference, and then they come up and it's... Five hundred dollars higher for the other. <laughs> I don't yeah. think so. You know, I mean, yeah. I want it fairly no. close. Yes, I. You know, like I said, the whole annual thing is seven percent, and I was trying to get from her how much of that seven percent is in that you know third quarter number, and she wasn't sure. So. Okay. Well, I think I think what I'm hearing is that we want to have the reps come out and meet with the employees so that they have an idea of, of what they'll be looking at. And then we want to wait to make a, a final decision until we have the actual numbers. Is that well, or a little more, I mean, unless she can guarantee these numbers. And, and do you guys want to come that day? Do you want to be present when she comes to visit with the employees? Or do you want me to put that I will up? be here. Okay. I don't think they okay. I mean, uh, I didn't know if you would have questions as well, so that's no. okay. Then I'll plan it for Unless some time. Unless they don't the want me here, and we, in which case I will respect that. Yeah. And I don't think they'll have a problem one way or another. Yeah. I'm just saying, though. I mean, I am more than happy to sit in on the meetings when I'm here with them right. as well. Okay. We're good. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Sorry. All fair.